Have you ever come across terminologies like this in questions and you're wondering what exactly is the difference between all this? Well, in this video, I'll be doing well to explain the difference between these terms and ending that confusion. Let's get straight into the video. All right, so let's talk about the first one, the shells. So the shells are also known as energy levels. Also known as energy levels or orbits. And what are they? They are discrete regions from the nucleus. For example, take a circle that has a center and another circle around it. So, assuming this point is the nucleus, this circumference is one shell. This other one is another shell. Shells have designated integral numbers assigned to them, and these numbers are the principal quantum numbers. I advise you to watch my next video on quantum numbers coming very soon. So, shells are designated by certain numbers called the principal quantum numbers. The shell closest to the nucleus is called the K shell. The one after that is called the L shell. The one after that is called the M shell. And we have the N, O, P, Q, like that. So there are seven possible shells that we can have. What are the seven possible shells that we can have? You can pause this video, think about that answer, and drop it in the comment section. Alright, so what did you get? So we have seven possible shells because we have seven possible periods. So we can have the K shell, the L shell, the M shell, the N shell, the O shell, the P shell, and the Q shell. So I mentioned earlier that each shell has a number designated to it that is assigned to it. And this number is called the principal quantum number. And the principal quantum number is denoted by letter N. So for the K shell, letter N is 1. For the L shell, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Just like that. So the principal quantum number just shows the shell in which an electron belongs to. So let's say a question says an electron is in a shell with the principal quantum number n equals to 2. You already know that that is in the second shell, which is the L shell. So these are ways to get questions. Now, one thing you should know that an electron in K shell is said to be in the ground state. And when an electron moves from here, to here, that electron is said to have undergone a phenomenon called excitation. But if it moves from here to here, it's also excitation. And for this excitation, the electron needs to have absorbed a certain amount of energy for it to get excited. And also, you should also note that just like the same way an electron can get excited from K shell to M shell, an electron can also fall from M shell to K shell. When an electron does that, it's said to lose energy. And in that losing energy, it loses its energy by emitting light rays, which contributes to the emission spectra. So now, let's talk about the subshell. When you hear the word subshell, what comes to your mind first is a subunit of a shell. So a subshell can also be called a sub-energy level or a suborbit. Alright, so let's assume we have an atom with K shell, the L shell, the M shell, let's say to the N shell. So this will be the K. This is the nucleus, don't forget. So this is the K shell, the L shell, the M, and the N. Okay, then we have the O. Now, our goal is to determine what a subshell really is. So there are four main kinds of subshells. We have S, P, D, and F. 
I know you might have heard that SPDF are orbitals or blocks in the periodic table. Yes, SPDF are blocks in the periodic table, but SPDF are also names of subshells in the periodic table. Don't forget, subshells are smaller units of shells. Now, I'm going to be demystifying this by looking at each and every shell and classifying the subshells on that. Now, for the K shell, you can only have one subshell, and that subshell will carry the principal quantum number of the k-shell which is 1 so 1 is it starts with the s so don't forget m n is the principal quantum number so for k 1 for l 2 for m 3 4 and 5 so for k-shell we can only have 1 s for l shell as we graduate the number increases with the principal quantum number so for l shell we can have 2s don't forget we have to write the 2 indicating that it is a subshell of the second shell so 2s and 2p so k shell the one with principal quantum number one has one subshell l shell the one with principal quantum number two has two subshells and m shell also has three subshells 3p and 3d so you name it after this spdf so why the n shell as four subshells 4s 4p 4d and 4s but when we get to o subshell we can have 5s 5p 5d and 5f so it can be more than this four so for k shell we have the ability to accommodate one subshell l shell two subshells m three subshells and four subshells and also o four subshells even if you go to p it would also be four subshells and with q it would also be four subshells because we're naming them after the spdf by just adding the principal quantum number in front of the subshells so each and every one of them the 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p 3d 4s 4p 4d 4f 5s 5p 5d and 5f they are all different subshells they are all different subshells and under these subshells we have smaller boxes or smaller rooms called the orbitals and that takes us to orbitals all right so let me explain in detail the concept of orbitals now let's draw an atom again Let's say we have an atom with three shells, the K shell, the L shell, and the M shell, and this is the nucleus. So the K shell, the L, and the M shell. We already learned that the K shell has only one subshell, which is the 1S. The L shell has two, the 2S two and the 2P. And the M shell has three, three S, three P, and the three D. Now, there's something I call the box configuration, and basically this is expressing orbitals using boxes. So to represent the one S subshell, represents it using a box. To represent the subshells of the L shell, we use two boxes for the two S and a longer one for the 2p so this is 1s 2s and 2p you may ask why do we have a rectangular box for 2p because the piece of shell has three orbitals in it the piece of shell has three orbitals in it the d of shell has five orbitals while the f of shell has seven orbitals we learn more on this with time so knowing that the piece of shell has three orbitals, we will divide this into three small boxes. Then for the M shell, we have three subshells. So this is for the 3S, this is for the 3P, and this is for the 3D, even longer. So 3P have three boxes, and the 3D must have five boxes. All right, so let's go back to the K shell. I said earlier that the K shell has just one subshell, which is the 1S subshell. 
and I said that a subshell or subshells contain subunits which are called orbitals. You'll be wondering, where is the orbital in one S subshell? Well, this right there is the orbital. This is because the one S subshell has just one box, meaning it just has one orbital. Now, the two S subshell also has just one box, meaning it has just one orbital. While the two P subshell has three boxes, meaning it has three orbitals. This has three small boxes, has three orbitals. Well, the 3D subshell has five boxes, meaning it has five orbitals. So that's it, guys. You can watch my next video on quantum numbers to gain more insight on this topic. And also, thanks for watching to this extent. If you'd like to solve some questions on what we just did, there's a link to a quiz in the description below. So attempt the quiz and let me know what you got. See you in my next video.